Sutra. This Bodhisattva remembers and knows the particulars of limitless past lives. That is, he remembers and knows for one life, remembers and knows for two lives, three lives, four lives, up to ten lives, twenty, thirty, and so on, including a hundred lives, limitless hundreds of lives, limitless thousands of lives, limitless hundreds of thousands of lives, or the coming into being of a kampa, the decaying of a kampa, for limitless coming into being and decaying of kampas, how I was born in such and such a clan and such and such a race with such and such a food and drink, having such and such a lifespan, traveling such and such a length of time with such and such suffering and happiness. Having died there, I was reborn in such and such a place. Having died in such and such a place, I was reborn in this place with such and such a form with such and such characteristics and appearance and such and such a mode of speech in that way he can remember and call to mind the limitless particulars of the past commentary this bodhisattva remembers and knows the particulars of limitless past lives possessing the wisdom of uh, to perceive one does not know how many previous lives of living beings with their differences. That is, he remembers and knows for one life the events of one lifetime, remembers and knows the events for two lives, three lives events, those of, uh, four lives up to ten lives, twenty, thirty, and so on, including the events of a hundred lives, all of which he knows along with they meet these hundreds of lives events, those of they meet these thousands of lives, and they meet these hundreds of thousands of lives. The Bodhisattva even knows what happened for the coming into being of a Kampa and of the decaying of a Kampa, and the events during both taken together. He knows everything that went on for the meatless comings into being and decayings of compass, such as how I was born in such and such a place with a such and such a name. I was called so and so when I lived in that particular place and was of such and such a clan. My family name was that one when I was in that particular place and was of such and such a clan. My family name was that one when I was in that particular location and I was someone of such and such a race right there with such and such food and drink. Those were the kinds of things I used to consume. Having such and such a lifespan, my life was that long, was that long, during such and such a length of time in the world with such and such sufferings and happiness. He knows all the bitterness he underwent along with the enjoyment. Having died there, I was reborn in such and such a place. Having died in such and such a place, I was reborn in this place with such and such a form, with such and such characteristics and appearance. I looked like that and had such and such a mode of speech. That's what my voice sounded like in each case. In that way, he can, can remember and call to mind, understand and know all the limitless particulars of the states of his life of the past. How is one able to have the penetration of past lives? Here's an analogy to illustrate it somewhat. If you consider it life that is past the penetration of past life on the part of average ordinary people is whatever they can remember of their present life that's already past they can can't remember previous lives at all the way sages can the reason one person can know of another's past lives is that there is interconnected karma among us all the person we see are those we have affinities or other conditions with another way of saying comic links. Yesterday, most of us, for instance, were at the city of 10,000 Buddhas holding the Kuanin recitation session. 
and there were a lot of more people there too. Today, there were fewer of us back at Gold Mountain Temple, but we can think of and remember who was there yesterday and what was done. How there were flies and mosquitoes to reciting Quan Yin's name with us. The flies were buzzing, and the mosquitoes were humming, each with its own work and sound. Last night, the text talked about the Bodhisattva knowing what mosquitoes were saying. Each mosquito yesterday was telling us, "Give me a little blood. Give me a little blood." It won't kill you, and that way I won't go hungry. That's the song we sang as they begged from you, saying, "Be compassionate. Donate some blood to sustain my life. It won't hurt you much, and it will help me a lot." Today, as we think of what happened yesterday, that's the penetration of past life. It was the same for previous lives, so that's why I say everyone has penetration of past life. If you can remember yesterday, and greater penetration if you recall past lives. It just depends upon the amplitude of your memory power, how much of the past you can know. But actually, it's better not to remember. What's the point of knowing all that anyway? It will just give you that many more afflictions. See how Mahamalukam the. Yamna cried when he saw his parents of past lives suffering in the hells. That's the advantage of that penetration, crying. If you don't know, you won't have to cry. So even though bodhisattvas have the penetration of past lives or other spiritual penetrations, they don't necessarily use them. It's it's like. People with money, they don't necessarily、uh, necessarily spend it, but just use it where they have to. For example, to practice giving. That's how I feel it is. If you don't agree, bring up your objections for discussion. Objection. Although we might have more afflictions if we knew the events of past lives, which is、uh, undesirable. We might want to know the vows we made in previous existences in order to fulfill them now. Answer: That's right. What I was saying before was cautioning you not to have afflictions or be turned by stress if you do possess the penetration of past lives. It wasn't to say that to have that penetration is not good. The point is that whatever state comes, you yourself shouldn't move. But should retain your samadhi. Sutra. This bodhisattva's heavenly eye is purified, surpassing human sight. He sees all living beings when they are born and when they die, with good forms or bad forms, in accordance with their karma, going to good or evil destinies. He sees how, if those living beings have performed evil actions of the body, performed evil actions of speech, or performed evil actions of mind, how if the standard worthies and sages held devon views and had the causes and conditions for karma of devon view, when their bodies decline and their lives come to an end, they certainly fall into the evil destinies and are reborn in the hells. This is how, if those living beings have performed wholesome actions with the body, wholesome actions of speech, and wholesome actions of mind, and have not slandered worthies and sages, but have held proper views and had the causes and conditions for karma of wholesome views, when their bodies decline and their lives come to an end, they certainly are reborn in the good destinies within the heavens. The Bodhisattva knows that all accurately with his heavenly eye. Commentary: This, the third ground, Bodhisattva's heavenly eye is purified. Our human eyes aren't pure, and so we can't see what the gods and the heavens are like. If our heavenly eye was pure, it would be surpassing human sight. Transcending the average size of people, he sees all living beings and how they are born, when they are born, and he also sees how they die when they die, and whether they are beings with good forms or bad forms, 
All of that is clear to him along with how in accordance with their karma they are going to good or evil destinies. If the karma they created was good, they go to wholesome destinies. But if they created evil karma, they go to evil destinies. This is how if those living beings have performed evil actions of the body, violations of killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct of it, it with their mouths, they have performed evil actions of speech, loose, slow speech, lying, harsh speech, or double-tongued speech, or if they have performed evil actions of mind by being greedy, angry, or stupid, and how if they stand up people who were worthy and people who were sages, and how if they held different views, which was why they did that slandering and had the causes and conditions for karma of Devin views, those comic obstacles, when their bodies decline and their lives come to an end. They certainly fall into the three or the four evil destinies and are reborn in the house due to their Devin views. This is how if those living beings have refrained from killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct, wholesome actions of speech, their bodies not engaging in loose, false, harsh, or double-tongued speech, and wholesome actions of might not being greedy, angry, or stupid, and have not slandered worthies and sages, that have held proper knowledge and proper views, and had the causes and conditions for karma of wholesome views. When their bodies decline and their lives come to an end, they certainly are reborn in the good destinies either as wealthy and honored people in the human realm or else within the heavens as gods. The Bodhisattva knows that all accurate, accurately with his heavenly eye, seeing it all with utmost precision. Sutra, this Bodhisattva, is able to enter and come out of all dhyana samadhis and Samapathis and yet does not undergo birth through their power. It is just according to his ability to fulfill the stations of three body shares through the power of his intent and his vows that he is born within them. Commentary This Bodhisattva is able to enter and come out of all dhyana samadhis and samapathis, the various stoppings and contemplatings. He can go into all samadhis and leave them as he wishes, and yet does not undergo birth through their power. Even though he goes to all those locations, he isn't forced to by some power of evil. It is just according to this ability to fulfill the stations of the Buddha shares, whether wherever he is born, in every single birth, through the power of his intent and his vows, that he is born within them. It's only from having decided to do so and made those vows in the past that he goes to be reborn in the various destinies, whether the three evil or three wholesome ones. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, when this Bodhisattva dwells upon this ground of emitting light. Because of the power of his vows, he comes to see many Buddhas, that is, he sees many hundreds of Buddhas, sees many thousands of Buddhas, sees many hundreds of thousands of Buddhas, sees many hundreds of thousands of Buddhas, up to and including seeing many hundreds of thousands of millions of Nayutas of Buddhas. He reveals and honors them completely with a vast and great mind and a profound mind that tends upon and makes offerings to them. He offers up all the necessities of life, clothing, food and drink, bedding and medicines. He also makes offerings to all the multitudes of the Sangha, and he transfers those good rules to Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha, Vada Treasury Bodhisattva calls out again. When this Bodhisattva dwells upon this ground of emitting light, because of the power of his vows, he comes to see many Buddhas, that is, he sees many hundreds of Buddhas, sees 
many thousands of Buddhas, sees many hundreds of thousands of Buddhas, sees many hundreds of thousands of Buddhas, up to and including seeing many hundreds of thousands of millions of Nayutas of Buddhas, he reveals and honors them completely with a vast and great mind and a profound mind, attends upon and makes offerings to them, all those Buddhas. He offers up all the necessities of life, clothing, food and drink, bedding and medicines. He also makes offerings of all those things to all left home people, the multitudes of the Sangha, and he transfers those gurus to Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, unsurpassed, proper, and equal right enlightenment, so that all living beings will become Buddhas soon. Sutra, in the presence of those Buddhas, he reverently listens to the drama. Having heard it, he accepts and holds it and cultivates it according to his power. This Bodhisattva contemplates all dramas as not produced and not destroyed, as existing due to causes and conditions. He first eradicates the bonds of views, then all the bonds of desire, the bonds of form, the bonds of existence, and the bonds of ignorance, which decrease to threats. Throughout the meekless hundreds of thousands of millions of Nayutas of compass, because of non-accumulation, his deviant greed, deviant hatred, and deviant stupidity all become extinguished, and all of his gurus become brighter and more pure. Disciples of the Buddha, it is just like real gold, which, when expertly refined, does not decrease in weight and becomes brighter and more pure. For the Bodhisattva, it is also that way. While dwelling upon this ground of the emitting light, because of non-accumulation, his devon greed, devon hatred, and devon stupidity all become extinguished, and all of his good rules become brighter and more pure. Commentary The Bodhisattva on the ground of emitting light makes offerings to the meekless hundreds of thousands of millions of Buddhas cultivating and amassing all good rules. He also makes offerings to the Dharma spoken by limitless hundreds of thousands of millions of Buddhas, along with as many members of the Sangha. Then he transfers those good rules to Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. In the presence of those Buddhas, in the way place of every single one of those Buddhas, he reverently listens to the Dharma. With great reverence and respect, he listens to all Buddha's drama. Having heard it, he accepts and holds it. After hearing the drama, you should cultivate according to the drama you have heard. If you merely listen to the drama but don't cultivate, it is of no benefit. Therefore, all of us who are here investigating the Buddha drama together should go on to cultivate according to the teaching we have investigated and put the principles discussed in the Buddhist sutras into practice. That is having the drama to accept and hold it. Acceptance is with the mind. Being able to remember the drama, holding is done with the body, utterly putting the drama into practice and really doing what has to be done. Then it is of use and he, therefore, cultivates it according to his power. In cultivating, you do not need to force things. You should cultivate according to what you are able to do and do as much as you can. If you can manage 1% of cultivation, then cultivate 1%. Cultivate 100% if that is your capacity. The point is to actually cultivate. This Bodhisattva on the ground of emitting light contemplates all dramas as not produced and not destroyed and existing due to causes and conditions. His contemplation is that all dramas from conditions are produced, all dramas from conditions are destroyed. Since they are produced from conditions and perish due to conditions as well, they have no substance of their own. Having no substance of their own, they are neither produced nor destroyed. He first eradicates the bond of views. We people are bound up by view delusions. 
Views here means Devin knowledge and Devin views, not proper knowledge and proper views. He first gets read of the bonds of Devin knowledge and Devin views, then all the bonds of desire. After that, he extinguishes the bonds of desire. Sexual desire is like a cord or rope that ties you up. If you can get rid of views, then you won't have desire, and those bonds of desire will be extinguished. Without desire, the bonds of form will be gone too. You won't have any attachment to form. When the bonds of form are gone, then the bonds of existence are extinguished as well, as so are the bonds of ignorance. Once rid of existence bonds, you also rid yourself of the bonds of ignorance, which decrease to threads. You become thinner, they become thinner and light, so that they are not so heavy and severe. Throughout the midlist hundreds of thousands of millions of nayutas of compass, during that many great compass, because of non-accumulation of those kinds of bonds of views, of desire, of form, of existence, or of ignorance, his devin's greed, devin hatred, and devin stupidity all become extinguished. He will never again have an unprincipled greed, unprincipled hatred, and unprincipled stupidity. Devin knowledge, Devin views, and Devin greed, hatred, and stupidity are gone for good, and all of his good rules become brighter and more pure. His good rules will keep increasing day by day. Disciples of the Buddha, all of you, it is just like real gold. It is as when a goldsmith refines gold, which, when expertly refined, does not decrease in weight. When he employs a variety of scientific and other methods to refine and smelt the gold, it does not weigh the least bit less and becomes brighter and more pure. The gold is daily refined better. For the Bodhisattva, it is also that way. The same holds true of the Bodhisattva. By dwelling upon this ground of emitted light, because of non-accumulation, because he does not accumulate his devin greed, devin hatred, and devin stupidity, those three poisons, all become extinguished, and all of his good rules become brighter and more pure. His good rules are increasingly brighter, purer, and more numerous. Sutra, this Bodhisattva's patient mind, compliant mind, harmonious mind, cheerful mind, non-hating mind, unmoving mind, non-turbid mind, mind of no high or low, mind not seeking reward, mind of repaying kindness, non-flattering mind, non-deceitful mind, and non chicharous mind or increase in purity. This Bodhisattva among the four dramas of attraction emphasis, emphasizes Beneficial conduct among the ten parameters, he emphasizes the parameter of patience. He does not fail to cultivate the others, but only does so according to his power and proportionately. Disciples of the Buddha, this is called the Bodhisattva's third ground, that of emitting light. The Bodhisattva who dwells upon this ground, for the most part, becomes ruler of the heaven of the thirty-three able to employ expedients to cause living beings to abandon greed and desire, using giving kind words, beneficial conduct, and similar work. All such karmic actions which he performs are not separate from mindfulness of the Buddha, mindfulness of the Dharma, and mindfulness of the Sangha, up to and including not being separate from mindfulness of endowment with the wisdom of the wisdom of all modes. Commentary This Bodhisattva cultivates the giving of offerings and accumulates all kinds of good rules, which daily increase and become more perfect. Therefore, he says, this Bodhisattva's mind is especially patient. He can bear what others cannot bear. His mind is also a compliant mind. He is not obstinate, stubborn, difficult to tame and subdue the way we living beings are with our huge view of self. The Bodhisattva has none of that. Instead, he has a harmonious mind. 
The Bodhisattva gets along with everyone and has no malicious thoughts. He is happy and cheerful in mind about everything and has a non-hated mind and an unmoving mind. No matter what states, what states he encounters, he is unmoved. And since he is free from greed, his mind does not move. He has a non-turbid mind. As this Bodhisattva cultivates and accumulates all sorts of gurus, his mind is extremely clear and pure, with no turbid thoughts. His attitude of mind toward all living beings is at all times impartial and fair, with no thought of high or low. When the Bodhisattva practices giving, he has a mind not seeking any reward. He benefits living beings and is kind to them and does not hope they will repay his kindness towards them. When it is the Bodhisattva who gives to other beings, he does not seek repayment of that kindness from those beings. However, the Bodhisattva has a mind of repaying kindness. He does want to repay all kindness that living beings show towards him and keeps that in mind. The Bodhisattva is a non-flattering mind. He would never play up to anybody. He also has a non-deceitful mind and would never dream of treating people or lying to them. He would never take anyone for a ride or deceive them with a fine vial. So those previous minds and his non treacherous mind all increase in purity. All improper attitudes diminish and his wisdom is daily brighter and more pure. This Bodhisattva among the four dharmas of attraction, giving, kind words, beneficial conduct, and similar work emphasizes the beneficial conduct. He stresses the, the door of practice, the a practice of benefiting others. Among the ten parameters, he emphasizes the parameter of patience. He particularly works on perfecting patience. He does not fail to cultivate the others is that he doesn't cultivate the other three dramas of attraction or other nine parameta, but only does so according to this power and uh, proportionately. He does so in proportion to his strength and as suits the circumstances in which he finds himself. Disciples of the Buddha, this is called the Bodhisattva's third ground, that of emitting light. Do you disciples of the Buddha know this is the third Bodhisattva ground, the ground of emitting light. The Bodhisattva who dwells upon this ground for the most part becomes ruler of the heaven of the 33. Generally, he will be Lord God of the Jayashimsha heaven and be able to employ his patterns to cause living beings to abandon greed and desire. He will be able to use all kinds of clever and expedient methods to teach and transform living beings, getting them to give up their craving and desire, using giving, kind words, beneficial conduct, and similar work. He is able to use those four dramas of attraction. All such comic actions which he performs are not separate from mindfulness of the Buddha, mindfulness of the drama, and mindfulness of the Sangha up to and including not being separate from mindfulness of endowment with the wisdom of the wisdom of all modes. He practices to the point of not failing to be mindful of endowment with all wisdom. The wisdom of the wisdom of all modes.